corn on the left and corn on the right. <laughs> First, drink a whole thing of water. Ah, I started it on the drive and I finished it. Now I'm gonna go sweat it out. <laughs> it's only 91 degrees. Holy cow, and I'm now crossing over the bridge, so I'm stuck. And the ranger warned me to be careful about ticks. And I'm like, I'm just gonna keep walking and not stop. Yep, still, last time I came here, I took home two ticks. Granted, they didn't bite me, but they were on me. I think this time I'm not going inside that little trail. It's a lot of fun, but they're going to be all over that. Instead, I'm going to stay on this main, main road. I just tried to walk into dirt tracks because today I'm here for exercise. Yeah, that's what's up. Oh man, they took the fence down. This place used to have a fence along here for six years, but it's gone now. And a lot of times in the evening, if you come here around 4 or 4.30, there's deer out here eating the grass. Because this is, this is their home. Yeah, so how far am I going to go? I don't know. I'll do at least two miles down and two miles back. Ouch, I just hit a big old fly. The yellow deer fly, they're so bad out here. Yeah, it's still pretty though. There's a plane up there somewhere. Someone just flying around on a little Cessna. Step, 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 step. Old moonshine. <laughs> the boiler, the cooker, the double thumper, the dry barrel, the condenser flake stand. And of course a sign that describes what's up. Moonshine in the swamp. Yup. But I gotta keep moving my feet, otherwise I'm gonna find a tick crawling up my legs. So let's keep moving. Pile of wood. Back in the old days, I'd use that to light those fires. But I'd love to be wandering in there, checking out that log, checking out all the little bushes, checking out that big old, look at that big old stick. Somebody set that down. That's a giant walking stick, man. Oh my goodness. That thing's taller than me. Look at this thing. Holy cow. And it's got some dirt on it. It's tough fighting that impulse to get in the bushes and start looking for critters. But I know better. Back six years ago, on the first or second or third day of June, I went out. I went here. It's my first time that first summer living out here in uh, North Carolina. And I didn't know what the woods were like, so I went into the woods and I spent a couple hours just looking for things to take pictures of. Oh, I was a lot of fun. But after about an hour of being in the woods, I'm like, man, I keep flicking off so many ticks. This isn't a good thing. So I probably flicked off maybe 30 different ticks during that time period. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just go home. So two days later, I knew that I had gotten a lot more than ticks. I had been attacked by a ton of chickers. Oh my Gosh. I know because I counted them. I counted each arm, each leg, the torso, my butt cheeks. My, it was They were everywhere, man. I mean, a couple of spots they weren't. I didn't have any in my hair up top of my head, and I didn't have any in my very private and most private areas or the soles of my feet. But I had them everywhere else. All the rest of that skin that's exposed, yeah. That's when I learned. Chiggers are not to be messed with because you don't feel them. Then they bite and burrow into your skin. They pour, they pour a little bit of saliva onto your skin, which deadens it so you don't feel them eating and sucking things up, chowing down on your body. And then that saliva leaves a, turns into a really hard substance and it itches for about a week to 10 days. I just got joined by a yellow deer fly. 
it's going to follow me and buzz around me and land on me and try to bite me for the next 10 minutes. So I can't slow down. i got to keep moving. I can wave my hand about a thousand times, but it's not going to do much good. Because those things are just going to find some spot that I can't reach, bite me, and then in 24 hours or so, I'm going to realize, man, where did that welt come from? Was there some bug chowing down on my skin? Yep. Zoom, zoom. Walk as fast as I can. Get some good exercise. <laughs> Even though it's 91 degrees. Crazy fool. Check out that boat. <laughs> it's a replica of a old boat from a long time ago. Yep, this is how they used to move the poles. And they'd move lumber along this canal. A canal built by slaves. Part of America's shameful history. This is this is what it looks like when yellow deer fly follow you and they keep landing on you, trying to bite you. I mean, they'll land underneath my glasses, they'll land on my ear, the back of my head, on my back where I don't even know they're there. Because, yeah, I'm wearing a shirt, but they'll still land there and then poke me through there and saw into my skin. Yeah, I can do this all day and it won't have much of an effect. I'm just moving that thing around. Ay, ay, ay. Sometimes I've waved my arms and accidentally hit my glasses and my glasses will go whoosh and I'm like, oh crap, where did I just knock my glasses? <laughs> oh, well, hopefully I'm walking fast enough that eventually that thing gets distracted with something else and I can have a little bit of peace and non-bitingness. <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> I don't know how the deer survive all these ticks and flies but the reason I have to worry is because these ticks know that if they just hang out on a blade of grass put some of their legs out like this something's gonna come by and it can grab onto them and it's probably gonna be a deer or some other animal so yeah that's exactly what they do in my shoes when I walk by because I'm uh, walking through on a dirt trail but there's still grass on the edges that I touch all the time. Ay, ay, ay. <sighs> Ranger just came by on a quad and we just chatted for a little bit <laughs> about ticks and these deer fly. <laughs> I've seen a few zebras out here, but no tigers. <laughs> Swallowtails, butterflies, not like the mammals. <laughs> that would be crazy. I'm not in Africa and I'm not at a zoo, but I have seen quite a few butterflies flittering around. See how tall those are? They're higher than me, taller than me. One day I was walking and just as I turned the corner coming this direction, there was a deer right here and a couple walking over there. And that deer was running away from them and then it turned and went right into the bushes and dove right into all that. Which has a lot of thorns in there, by the way. Brambly. It didn't go through a little opening, it went over the top. Whew because it was scared. But yeah, these are the kind of things you can sneak up on if you're being quiet and not talking. One day, about two years ago, just as I turned this corner, I turned the corner and I realized there was a lynx up on the road, on the right-hand trail, right-hand track. I didn't know what it was at first, so I just kept walking, and then finally it heard me. And it turned and looked at me, and I'm like, oh my God, that's a wild cat. Didn't know if it was a mountain lion or a puma or cougar, lynx, bobcat. I didn't know. Chester cat. <laughs> then it took off running. Oh my gosh. And you could tell that was a beautiful creature. Yep. And I got back and told the ranger. And they're like, yeah, that's a lynx. We see him out here every once in a while. They're way more afraid of us than we are of them. Because we're the threat. They're not actually a threat to somebody my size out here. So yeah, it's one of the reasons why I love coming out here, just walking. You never know what you're gonna see. You might see nothing but green and brown dirt, but it's all good. It's good for the body, good for the mind to get outside and walk. Here's the two mile marker. Let's keep going and see what else there is. Yep, just keep walking and walking and walking. It's cool how all these plants are growing on top of that old stump. Whew. 
This is normally the trail I take. I go down this for a mile until I get to a cool bridge. Let's see how overgrown it is. I'm surrounded by swamp. I'm in the Great Dismal Swamp. So there's a lot of water, a lot of water around me. And turtles everywhere. I'm okay with solitude doing things on my own. I spent a lifetime developing habits that allow me to enjoy things in solitude. Whether it's hiking by myself or reading a book by myself or watching Netflix on my phone by myself or cooking a really nice dinner and eating it by myself. I'm okay with that. Sure, I, I like to spend time with friends and have shared activities, but I'm quite comfortable doing things on my own. I don't get depressed. I don't get lonely. I don't get sad or overly introspective. I don't have negative feelings. I just try to do things that bring me joy. And uh, at very few points in life am I ever bored because there's always so much I can do. Always. Yep. I just develop healthy habits and stay a part of groups. I just don't want to be one of those people that's miserable when I'm stuck with just me. I mean, imagine that. If you're such a boring person that you bore yourself, what does it say about you? See? Ticks. I've got two on me, so I'm turning around. I've got one there, one there, and one there. I'm turning around. That's four. They got onto me. Now let's just make sure there's no more. That was four, five, six. Time to head back. Ticks are pretty bad. I gotta stop every few minutes and check myself out now because they are all over the place. Yeah, that's six so far. I may get more. They may still be climbing up. And I've got to stop them before they get to the edge of my shorts. At least I brought an apple. Oh, little bug, go. Oh, it's long past Beetle. Okay, buddy. Catch you later, alligator. That is beautiful. I think it caught something and it's gonna eat it. But I gotta go, because otherwise I'm, I'm making it nervous. That was cool. You never know what you're gonna see. I was just walking along and I saw movement off to my left. So I stopped and turned and grabbed my phone because I know if there's movement, it's something I probably want to get a picture or a video of. And there was that raptor in a tree. I think it had caught a fish and uh, it was getting ready to eat it. Or it could have been a mouse or something like that, but it had something in its talons and I was making it nervous. So I finished my video and quietly went on my way so it could eat in peace up in the tree. Yep, that was cool. <laughs> I did take a risk when I went on the Martha Washington Trail. I looked down there and thought, yeah, I shouldn't do that. But I went ahead and did it anyways. <laughs> and the consequence was grand total so far, 13 ticks. Only two were on my body, on my legs. There were three or four on my socks, and then all the rest were on my shoes, because I have white shoes, so they're really easy to see. And then all I do is I stop every once in a while right where it's sandy, like here, and away from shrubbery, away from the grass, and I'll stop for just a minute, take a quick peek. <laughs> but yeah, I made that choice. I should not have gone down there. If I would have stayed on this trail right here, 
I'd have been fine. I wouldn't have had any ticks that grabbed hold of me. <laughs> but I took that risk. I'll know better next time. Whew. 14. <laughs> I did see a toad hop across my path a while back on the Marth Washington Trail, but I did not stop. <laughs> I had to check that impulse to stop, do a little video with a cute little toad. Nope, I didn't need any other eight-legged critters climbing aboard this moving machine. I just kept going. Said hi and bye to the toad and kept trekking. <laughs> now I feel a niche. Let's double check. Yep. Oh, can't get that off. Oh, it's a freckle. <laughs> Still stuck at 14. 15. <sighs> Sorry, it's a yellow deer flies. They are not pleasant to be around. And they land everywhere and they'll bite you if you don't get rid of them. Keeps landing on my arm and on my face. Whew. <laughs> Can drive you insane. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Anyways, for those of you who are YouTube creators, you understand the dilemma you face when you're, you have plans, you prepare a concept, and you go out into the woods with the intent of creating a particular themed um, video production. And the woods has something else in mind. The outdoor says, no, no, no. <laughs> You're going to create a video on a very different topic, but an important topic. <laughs> well, that's happened to me today. So all of this footage is going to go towards something else. <laughs> and I'm guessing you might already know what it's about. Let's see how high my numbers go. <laughs> I just missed the bunny. It was in the trail. But it took me so long to get my camera out and turn it around. It's in the bushes right there. That was cute. Sometimes you don't get to record things, but I still live the experience. That was a cute little bunny. <laughs> I came out on the trail today happy to be alone. But I wasn't alone. Oh my gosh. I had an aerial bombardment by so many yellow deer fly. Oof. Yes, there's pretty things to fly, like that butterfly right there. <laughs> and then I had a bunch of hitchhikers. 15 so far. Wow. Imagine trying to make your way through that. That'd be pretty much impossible. <laughs> Walking by myself gives me a chance to think about things that are pretty interesting. Concepts that wouldn't come to me if I was just watching television, sitting at home, or reading a book. Maybe when I'm reading a book, but probably not. Here's a concept. You have to ask yourself, why is the human species so social? Why do we value companionship and being with others? So we know when observing primates that there's a very practical reason for groups to cluster together. Not just for safety, but to take care of the little bugs. How many times do you see primates grooming each other? So imagine, go back in time 10, 12, 15,000 years ago, when humans crossed the frozen land and ended up in north, uh, northern North America then worked their way eventually to all parts and all the way into South America. But how often are these people depicted as having no clothes or very little clothes? And I'm thinking, we don't really know, but it makes sense. We can only guess based upon modern tribes in the last 500 to 600 years. European encounters with them, either naked or very little clothing on. Do you know how practical it would be to live with others and walk? If you had a tick on you, when your buddies be like, oh, I got a tick on you, boom, flick it off. Someone else be like, oh, hey, you got a tick on you, let me flick that off. Whereas if you have a whole bunch of clothes in a hot, humid environment like this, like I have on, a lot of clothes, um, you wouldn't even see them. They'd be hiding underneath 
and that's not healthy for you. So it serves a practical purpose to live in a community for your own physical safety. And yes, there's other factors too. You find your mates and you know, you share a, a, an abode, a safe place, of course. And then eventually people specialize and you have certain people hunting, hunting and you have certain people gathering, etc., etc. And it gets specialized eventually to modern times. But it makes sense to, this is how we evolved to become a species socially. Our social involvement involves us needing and relying upon others to make things work. And I do. I mean, I didn't make this shirt or this hat or this pair of glasses. I didn't have the ability to figure out how bad my eyes were and what prescription would work. I relied upon others to do that for me. These shoes, they're well made. I don't have the skill to make those. I rely upon other people to make the very things that I not only wear, but the foods that I eat, the place where I live. Other people made this stuff using the resources of the land. So I'm very dependent upon others, even though I like to spend a large portion of my day by myself. I'm still reliant upon others. In fact, we all are. Sometimes I get this idea, well, I'm self-sufficient. I'm doing very well and blah, 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 and I don't need anybody. Hmm. How did I get to this location? I got here in a car I didn't make on roads that I didn't build and to a park that I don't keep up by cutting the grass and making roads and paths for people to walk on. Just my trip here today, I am so reliant upon others. I'm even reliant, reliant upon plants from millions of years ago because that gas and oil in my vehicle came from somewhere. It didn't just poof into existence because someone spoke magical words. <laughs> yeah. So while I like my solitude, I recognize that I need to play a role in keeping this system working. Help others, others help me. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. You find the tick on me and I'll find the tick on you. Just don't get naked, please. I'm so embarrassed. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed this video and I didn't freak you out. But this is the reality of going out on a hike in June. In a swamp, the Great Dismal Swamp of North Carolina. <laughs> You're going to come across little critters. But you'll also see a few cool things. Like a bunny. And I think a hawk. Or an osprey. I'm not sure. Yep. Life is good. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Whew, I took off my shoes and socks. And I found a few more. <laughs>